Loughborough University, a world-renowned institution producing top-class athletes with 40 consecutive years as Bucks champions, constantly striving to redefine sporting excellence. And now, there is a new challenge on the agenda. We want to become the university leader in cycling. Uh, I'm Dr Dave Nichols. I'm the cycling programme manager at Loughborough Sport. So cycling has become a performance sport. This is the first full year that we'll run as a, a full performance programme. And that brings two kind of team objectives and overriding goals. We want to become the university leader in cycling. It's a space that's really not currently filled. Um, so we want to be pushing the boundaries of cycling for university students. And secondly, it's about raising the profile and reputation of Loughborough Cycling on the international um, and national stage. Um, so we have pretty lofty ambitions for the team. The performance squad has come to the Derby Velodrome for pre-season training. sessions technique development on the track. When it comes to bucks and the buck selections we can pick any of our riders and put the strongest into any combination to make them ride fast as a team. The objective of the team now is every single year we win bucks we establish ourselves as the leaders and that is the deliberate approach going forward. Come on come on come on last three days we've uh, taken a group of students that I didn't really know very well, didn't really know their skills or where they were at and we've taught, I've, I think we've taught them the basics of, of track riding. I'll be their track coach until Bucks, so Bucks is end of November, I think there's 10 sessions booked in till, till then and I'll be that track coach to take them there so there's another three months of four months of coaching for me. Um, but from a, a start point on Monday, which is a little bit ragged, to an end point today when they're actually looking like a drilled squad, has been fantastic. As we get nearer the event, the sessions will look more like the events. So these first three have been just about very, very basic track skills that don't look a lot like the event they're going to be racing at but it means they've learnt all the stuff I 16 year olds know. And as we get nearer the event, we'll do more sort of timed efforts on, on pursuiting and that, and that kind of stuff. So it'll, it'll look more identifiable as races as we get nearer bucks. My name is Travis Bramley and I'm a rider for Loughborough Uni. But well, very new to the track. I only really started at Loughborough Uni summer camp this August, so I've probably done less than 20 sessions on the track since then. But yeah, it's been good fun actually. This will be my first Bucks track um, and actually my second Bucks cycling event. So I did the team time trial back in March last year, but before that I was a triathlete. So um, I'm looking forward to donning the Bucks cycling colours this time. I'm not really used to racing two days in a row. In terms of the number of events that are going on, it's a packed programme at Bucks. I think it would be maybe quite hard mentally to try not to focus on all the racing around me and just focus on what I'm doing. So we had a questionnaire available online and um, obviously we're trying to capture freshers coming into the university so people we'd not previously seen could still see what we were doing and apply throughout from A-level results day up to the start of term. And that wasn't just looking at performance metrics, uh, race results, also attitudes, motivations, what riders wanted to get out of the squad as well as what they were willing to put into it. Um, and we, we ended up testing around 30 riders. In the lab itself, we kind of had two different blocks. There was an endurance test, which we looked at a six second and peak power, uh, and three minute power and 12 minute power, um, and a little bit of modeling to figure out things like critical power um, and their thresholds too. 
kind of rank the riders between each other, see where certain people's strengths and weaknesses were. On the sprint side, that was very different. It was peak power, six second power, 20 second power, and one minute power. So really looking at the demands of track racing and track sprinting and where we could look, for example, team sprint requires three riders. So where would three fit into that sort of uh, range of, of, of their physiology? since the last three months so it's been full on been there like at least three times a week which has been yeah crazy but um it's been nice to sort of see the improvement over those three months as well last year i did triathlon and i've always done like a bit of triathlon but this is the first sort of year that i've done a lot of cycling so it's kind of escalated a lot from what i've done before on my first session on my bike i slid down like i didn't fall off but i slid down the banking and then freaked out completely um and then since then i've only fallen off once actually um my foot came out of my pedal and i just kind of like flipped over um which kind of hurt but yeah it's um i've not luckily i've not had too many too many wobbles we have really limited track time and it's very expensive so in order to build those engines, that's a lot of turbo trainer sessions out on the road. A lot of that physical training is, has been done outside of the track and we've really focused on technique and skill development on the velodrome, which you can't really replicate anywhere else. Now it, we've got to pick a team on Tuesday. We've got to get the stopwatches out. So this weekend will be our final session before that selection is made. And, and we've got to see who's doing the quickest individual pursuits who can use those skills they've built to slot into a team Brothers. pursuit. And that may not be the fastest four individuals, but actually the four who can ride best together and create that fastest cumulative time. I think everyone who's in our track long list has a chance to compete in an event. Uh, and something like Bucks, you're not just looking for one team, you can have B, C, even D teams competing and, and some of them you can have 20 riders enter for something like an individual sprint so if we can get three teams in a top eight you can potentially have eight riders all going for a single event across 10 or 12 events that are available so everyone who's currently on our long list we are looking at where can this person compete and where can they contribute to the overall score Hi, I'm Frankie. I'm part of the new Love for Cycling Academy. So this is my third Bucks track. I'm going to be racing each event minus the individual sprint. So I'll be doing the individual pursuit, which is a 3k timed effort, you against the clock, no one else on the track. The 500 meter time trial, which again is a timed effort. And then on the Sunday, I'll be doing team sprint, which is two riders on bunch bars two laps as quick as you can only one rider has to finish the team pursuit which is probably the most spectator friendly is four riders to start 4k three to finish as quick as you can again all against the clock until you get into the final where you need to catch the team on the other side of the track to win your race or go quicker if you can't catch them and then the bunch racing starts which is my favorite part the elimination is pretty much what it says on the tin. Last rider across the line each lap is eliminated. It's the most tactical race. Your strength and your power is not that important. It's purely about tactics, where you position yourself in the bunch and where you're sat. So you can either sat on the front, 
maybe one or two riders up so you've got a clear line, you can always accelerate and you're never at the back, but you're working so much harder than whoever's just sat on your wheel. So I really have to concentrate on that. And it's quite an argy-bargy race as well. So you've got to stand your ground and have a bit of confidence that if someone whacks into you or someone tries to bash you out of the way, you'll stay put and stay where you are and hold your ground. So since uh, cycling has become a performance sport, there's definitely a lot more support off the track. We've got a lot of physiology support, testing, and working with a nutritionist as well is really helpful, especially coming to a weekend where I'm going to be racing eight or nine races in less than 48 hours. So planning food and nutrition around that is quite important. This year we've been lucky enough to have um, some time in the altitude chamber, um, a six week block with Steve the physiologist, um, and hopefully that will have benefited the three or four riders that have been able to do that coming into Bucks track. The altitude chamber we have here sort of and having access to it for our cycling team is a huge benefit. My name is Steve Harris, I'm the physiologist for Loughborough Sport. In our performance lab we have an altitude chamber that allows us to change the composition of oxygen and other gases in the air to be able to simulate altitude. What we had people doing in there was doing really intense sprints, so really super maximal stuff. Work in a refined oxygen deprived environment, which stimulates their muscles to become more and more efficient at producing power in that absence and really develop that anaerobic capacity for them to perform. Yeah, everything becomes a lot harder because you can't recover quite as well because you're not able to get as much oxygen back in. Your legs will feel more tired, it will feel like you've almost got that burning sensation a lot more. So towards the end, obviously the guys got a lot more confident. We were ramping up the number of sets, reducing the amount of rest, so make sure that we're progressively um, sort of developing the guys and pushing them harder each session. Hello, I'm Scott Quincy and I am a cyclist for Loughborough University. I mean, I've ridden, obviously, I've ridden a bike my whole life, but I've, I've sort of started competing, I must have been about 12, and then track, I must have been about 16, and I had some quite awful races, I remember them very vividly. <laughs> You'd think that 16 was quite an early age, but a lot of the guys have been racing since they were like 12, 13 on the track. It, it was quite obvious in certain disciplines, so for example, in the individual pursuit when I was a junior, I was, it was the first time I'd ever competed in those events. And I was often um, doing something slightly wrong that the other guys would go, oh yeah, I was making that mistake last time. And I would sort of be like, oh, damn. And the next time I'd, I would fix that mistake, I'll make another mistake that they had made the time before. And it's just because they were always a step ahead of me because they started much sooner than I had. And I, I'm hoping that I'm getting over that now because there's only so many mistakes you can make, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's a tough sport if you're late to it. My favorite, probably the points race. Uh, typically it's every 10 laps. Uh, you race for points and the first four riders across the line get points and then it just repeats like that for every every 10 laps and then the points add up and at the end the person with the most points wins. <laughs> it sort of, there's a lot of factors going on in the race. It's very complicated, probably the most technical of races and yeah, that's, that's what I like. <laughs> I believe that if you turn up to the event fully prepared and you've done everything you can possibly do to prepare for that event, there's nothing else you can do and you don't worry about what people think. You're pretty there for the medal. My aim is to get a medal, potentially multiple, but you know, there's the aim in my head and then there's the aim that I'm going to express to people and they're, they're slightly different because there's always that fear of underachieving and not getting what you want, but uh, yeah, essentially I'd like to do a route for having a team, show them that their work is worthwhile, or the whole performance squad is, is worthwhile thing. So that's, that's my aim. So the support that Loughborough Sport brings to the table of performance sports is astronomical. It's S and C, nutrition, psychology, sports science, physiotherapy. Um, we really have access to everything that Loughborough offers on this campus. So it's really a world-leading facility, and Loughborough Sport as a performance team really opened the doors to, to to that sort of access. I think. The really awesome thing about Loughborough and being part of the, the academy and the track team is that it's given me, given me the opportunity to race at the highest level, compete against the country's best 
while pursuing a world class degree here at Loughborough. It's really nice to have that sort of sort of structure and support from obviously a lot of people who know what, <laughs> know what they're talking about. And yeah, in terms of like uh, the physiology and the nutrition and everything, it's really nice to have that support. So for me, as I haven't really raced since August back at the National Ted, I've had a massive block of training with no racing. So I haven't had to really taper for anything. And now we're inside the last two weeks it's actually settling down for me now and my training load is really reduced. A lot of rest going into it and then fine tuning little things before the weekend without adding too much strain to your body. Again, thinking about everything else, so what equipment, what kit you're going to need, how you're getting up there, what support you're going to have over the weekend, what order you're racing in, what gears you're going to need on your bike, when, when you're going to be able to sleep, when you're going to nap, what you're going to be wearing, like keep your body warm, keep your legs warm. It's always really hot in there. But now where are we? Just over a week out, so I'm just getting excited now. Just one exam to get through and then head up. So I started on the day after track last year. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, the team overall won the track. There's obviously many competitions within the track. Um, but the overall points that we took from that weekend was we, we were the highest scoring university, so pressure's on. <laughs> Nottingham are a huge rival on the track, um, and I think when you look at the universities that, that do well at track racing are the ones that are situated near velodromes. So Nottingham, Derby, Manchester, Glasgow, those universities are the ones that have access to lots of track training, lots of track time, easy to get there. Um, but I think Nottingham will be a, a, a huge rival for us at, at the track weekend. This year, the Bucks Track Championships are being held in Manchester. This year saw an excellent start for the newly established performance squad, winning the overall Bucks Track Cycling Championships and setting new records in the process. Their dominant team performance saw them collect 16 medals, proving the dedication and commitment to the training programme set out by specialist staff and coaches at Loughborough University. These achievements are the perfect foundation to build upon for future sporting excellence. <laughs>